Ronald McDonald House guest Robin Watts. Brenna and Claire were born 12 weeks premature, and at that point they were admitted directly into the NICU. And we were told that we shouldn't expect them to live past the first 12 hours of their lives. And as time went on, Brenna wasn't coming off of the ventilator. And it was a question of not if, but when she would need a tracheostomy to breathe. We first thought the birth of twins was going to be an exciting, joyous event. And it became a nightmare. It feels like you're living in a foxhole from day to day. You never know if you're going to get good news or bad news or when are they going to tell you some horrible news about your child or give her a death sentence. And what should have been joyful became grief-filled and it felt like we were actually in mourning for our dreams, for what we had for our family. Peter Watts. This was all brand new to us. I mean, we didn't know anything about prematurity. We didn't know anything about tracheostomies. And we really uh, started off not knowing much. And we learned along the way. We, uh, we learned that if we want to give our child her life back, her voice back, um, we needed to come to Cincinnati Children's Hospital to get the care that they can provide. Brenna's surgeon, Robin Cotton, MD. Some children who are premature need to be intubated, that is, have a put a breathing tube in through their a voice box into their trachea while their lungs mature. So when I first saw her, she had a significant uh, obstruction in the, in the larynx. Um, doing nothing at all wouldn't mean that she had a life with a tracheotomy in place. So we embarked on a series of operations which allowed us to enlarge the airway, uh, give her a speaking voice, and eventually get rid of the tracheotomy. Peter. So one of my fondest memories is when Brenna first had her trach out and we were discharged successfully from the hospital. We were running out to pick up some odds and ends and I heard Brenna say from the back seat of the car, um, Dada, for the first time without her trach. And that's a moment I will never forget because my child spoke and she spoke without mechanical assistance. When we first bring Brenna into the hospital for a procedure or any sort of surgery, she sees it as, this is gonna be okay. I'm going to see all the people I know, I'm going to see my nurses, I'm going to meet the people I haven't seen in a while. And she has her routines. She dresses in her scrubs, she wears her stethoscope, and she tries to make light of the situation. She tries to be very strong and brave. And deep down we know that she's been through this before. And we know that this is how she's distancing herself from the fact that she's actually going to have to go into the operating room. The reality is when Brenna gets that bracelet on and she knows that's the starting gun, it's time to start the race. It's also the race for us too. And as routine as it might be, because we've done it so many times, we never know what's gonna happen. So you take a deep breath, you go into the battle and start the race and hope for the best. Brenna, under anesthesia and surrounded by medical specialists, lies in a hospital bed, her doll by her feet. If it wasn't for the Ronald McDonald House, we couldn't have been able to do this for Brenna. On so many levels, we couldn't do this, both financially and emotionally. Financially, that's without explanation. I mean, this is such an incredible facility that gives us a bed to sleep in, a shower to clean up in, um, a kitchen to eat in. And it takes that stress of wondering, what am I going to do tonight for dinner? It takes that out. Emotionally, this place, the house is, it's almost unexplainable. It's, 
such a support system, especially when you have been coming here for many years and you get to know people. When you walk through the door, if somebody at the front desk sees that you maybe are crying or you're down in the dumps, they'll snag you and, and talk to you for a second and just give you a hug. It gives you some place to come and decompress for a few minutes. It's a chance to forget about some of the serious medical issues and focus on being human and focus on being a child. Brenna smiles, riding a tricycle to the Ronald McDonald House playground, where she plays on the swings and the slide with her twin sister, Claire. Now, Executive Director Jennifer Gooden. We take families who feel adrift and scared and frightened, and we help bring routine and normalcy to their lives. You know, they meet other kids here who are going through the same thing, and the patients, the little kids, really feel a sense of normalcy. They might meet another kid in their playroom who has a trach, and back home, they're the only kid in their whole school with a trach, but here, there's three or four others running around our house. So. It really helps the kids to see that they're not alone. Brenna. And that's why I get here and everyone has to go. And for anesthesia, they have to go through operations and surgeries and checkups. And it just really makes me feel happy that, like when you walk around and you see cancer patients, other people would stare. And I don't, because I understand it. That, oh, I feel so bad for them that they have to go through this cancer patient or any other kind of patient doesn't stare at me on my neck. I mean, I just hate when people stare at me and here they don't. They don't stare at me and they don't scare at my scar. And that's how it makes me feel really happy and like, it doesn't make me feel awkward or different than other people because I just have to go through this, this one little thing and people just take it like, oh, I have to be extra careful with them. And no, they don't. I mean. I'm a girl, and I'm a human being. I can do it same as they do, but just differently. Jennifer. There's actually research that shows that when a family is close to their child and able to provide that support on a daily basis, that the child actually heals faster. So not only does Ronald McDonald House help keep families together and to gain support from their own family and others going through the same thing, but we also truly believe that it helps children heal faster and go home faster and resume their lives back home. Peter. When you go over to the hospital, you're back into the war zone. You never know what's gonna happen. But you walk 100 feet from the hospital over to the house, and this is an oasis in the middle of the desert. This is a place to come and refresh and get back into your A-game, and then get back over to the hospital to care for your child. Ronald McDonald House Charities, Greater Cincinnati, celebrating 30 years.